We're going to show now a sequence, a video sequence, demonstrating the use of a device called the Halo 90 radio frequency ablation device. This is a device uh, that delivers radio frequency energy uh, to a specific depth uh, and is used for doing what I call touch-up jobs with the uh, with Barrett's esophagus. So, uh, if there are residual islands of Barrett's uh, that are present, uh, then we use this device uh, to treat those areas. And uh, we'll now uh, begin the video uh, demonstrating the Halo 90 uh, radio frequency ablation device. As you can see, we're beginning the examination with a standard endoscope. We have it fitted with a cap. And you can see with white light uh, at the 9 o'clock position, an island of residual Barrett's. Uh, normal squamous epithelium is white, and the Barrett's is a pinkish uh, type of epithelium. Uh, we're now moving toward the GE junction. We just passed an area that you might have noticed a little bit of scar tissue. This patient has had a prior EMR for an area of high-grade dysplasia. And now you can see with the white light uh, these tongues of uh, Barrett's epithelium. We're now switching to what's called NBI, narrowband imaging. This is a way of filtering the light uh, so the blue light uh, is the primary source of light. And this highlights both the mucosal vessels as well as a, a mucosal pattern. And you can see here that it's easy to distinguish the white uh, squamous epithelium uh, from the darker uh, mucosal patterned uh, Barrett's epithelium that you can see there uh, in the center of the image. So NBI is used as a, a better way of distinguishing squamous epithelium uh, from the Barrett's epithelium. You can see here again there are several tongues that we're going to treat as well as that island uh, that's more proximally located uh, within the uh, esophagus. The first uh, thing that we do is actually wash uh, the Barrett's epithelium and here you can see a, a washing catheter uh, being delivered through the biopsy channel. We're washing with a material called mucomist uh, and it's a mucolytic agent. Uh, columnar and Barrett's epithelium produces mucus and we want to get the best and or optimal contact between the radiofrequency ablation device and the mucosa. And to do so, we want to get rid of the mucus. And we do that by spraying a muca mist on it. We're now fitting the scope with the Halo 90 radiofrequency ablation device. Uh, we put it onto the end of the endoscope with a sleeve. And then you can see protruding from the 12 o'clock position, it's almost like a baseball cap. This is the device uh, and it's twisted until it's uh, moved to the 12 o'clock position. We're now intubating the patient. You can see the vocal cords uh, that we're passing by. You can see the baseball cap bill uh, in the foreground at the 12 o'clock position. Getting into the esophagus requires some gentle torquing back and forth uh, to get the probe past the upper esophageal sphincter. We're now nicely in the esophagus. And then we're using white light right now, but now we've switched to the NBI again because it shows us the Barrett's epithelium uh, better. So there's that island at 9 o'clock that we saw before. We torque the scope uh, so that the island is at 12 o'clock. I go up and my up down, and then I simply push the pedal, uh, and it delivers that energy. There you see the white eschar, sort of like searing tuna, that's produced by the radio frequency. Uh, energy. So I just uh, position the uh, baseball cap or the radio frequency ablation device against the tissue uh, and then hit the pedal and it produces this very superficial burn and you can see the, the white scar tissue there. This sequence of images is a little bit difficult to get oriented but I'm basically treating uh, 360 degree circum circumferential treatments around the GE junction. If you remember we had some tongues uh, at the GE junction and I've moved 360 degrees uh, there to treat those. Now once you've treated it once, uh, there's some eschar or, or dead tissue essentially that's on the uh, sur surface of the esophagus. And I basically use the, the device, the baseball cap as I'm calling it, uh, it's at the 12 o'clock position, to be a scraping device. And what I'm doing is trying to scrape uh, all of the 
uh, dead tissue uh, that was overlying uh, the area off. The reason for that uh, is because, again, we're going to treat it again. Uh, the protocol calls for two treatments uh, in each area, and I want to make as good a contact as possible. We're spraying again now, but now we're just spraying water, um, and it's just an aid to try to get rid of pieces of tissue, a little bit of blood, uh, etc. Anything that might come in the way of getting good contact between the uh, radiofrequency ablation device and the mucosa. So we're just scraping back and forth gently, uh, cleaning the area uh, as thoroughly as possible. Now we're going to get ready to retreat this area and uh, you can see I'm using white light right now and I'm just positioning this uh, device up against the mucosa. There I've done an ablation uh, procedure. Now I'm going to torque to the left to get that island again. Position it at 12 o'clock, come up on my up down, and then when I feel I have good pressure and contact, I push the pedal. This second treatment is more difficult to appreciate. Um, once you've uh, done the first layer of treatment, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to see where you've been and to see the, the second treatment. So a little bit of it is uh, sort of empiric. Um, I just sort of uh, look around and, and perceive uh, where I need to treat. Uh, but the second treatment is clearly more difficult to, uh, to make sure that you cover all the area. Here I'm going around that GE junction again, all 360 degrees of the GE junction to get those tongues of Barrett's uh, that were present. So we have completed this treatment or we will complete this a treatment. The patient is maintained on double doses of a PPI. Uh, and then uh, typically I see them back at three months after this is all healed and then look at the esophagus to see if we've ablated all of the Barrett's.